Hey, I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to Producer Tech's iDJ course, Beginner's Tutorials. This course is for anyone who wants to get into DJing. No matter what kit you own, or if you don't own any yet, this course will give you all of the basic skills you need to start mixing straight away. As well as providing a guide to the different DJing formats, I'll be going through each stage of the mixing process, including track selection and analysis, queuing, beat matching, crossfading, filtering, EQing and other effects, and much more. At any stage of the course, help us at hand via email or on the forum, so you're always able to have your questions answered and have a place to post your mixes for others to feed back on. Anyway, before we get started, how about a bit of history? DJing first became popular at some point back in the 1980s, predominantly due to the emergence of house and techno, as well as hip-hop where its primary goal was to provide a continuous beat for the dance floor. Back then, there was really only one format, two turntables and a mixer, meaning two vinyl decks on which records could be spun at various speeds in order to be synchronised with one another. Nowadays, however, the options are vast. Whilst many old school purists or scratch DJs still use vinyl based formats, there are a host of digital options, ranging from CD decks, to DJing software and a control surface, not to mention the wealth of other music software and hardware that can be linked up to totally customise your setup. So let's start with the oldest format of vinyl then. This is the last surviving form of commercial analogue music available today, and is still loved for its feel, and some also say the sound. What does analogue mean? Well in this case it means that the music has largely stayed in the physical domain, being represented by movement at both the recording and replaying stages. By this I mean the tiny movements of the needle back and forth through the groove are transported and eventually converted into movements of the speaker cone, enabling the track to be heard. The difference with digital is that a digital format like a CD contains music that's been converted into bits, meaning ones and zeros, which then need to be decoded in order to be played. The advantages of this are that it's more robust, it doesn't degrade as easily, it's transferable, and all of the other digital benefits that I'm sure you know about already. If we put this into a DJing context though, one CD can contain about 10 full resolution tracks, or lots more if they're compressed formats like MP3s, and is significantly lighter than a vinyl record. So the sheer weight of vinyl is normally enough to put most people off. Why do some people still hang on to it then? Well some DJs believe it to be the purest form, like I said, with there being no way of automatically synchronising the beat as with most digital formats, which a lot of people still say is cheating. Also, there's the look and feel of the whole process, with physical sleeves to leaf through whilst choosing what to play. And a small minority also say they prefer the sound of a record, with the mechanical parts of the record deck producing tiny fluctuations in timing that make the sound more real and less robotic and lifeless. But this is one of those subtleties that the much greater majority wouldn't even notice. My personal experience of CD decks when they first began to appear was a fear of not being able to get your hands on the record itself, with the CD being hidden away inside, and therefore having to be more reliant on the jogging controls on the deck, which, having been used to my Technics, was a completely different experience. However, once I got used to a jog wheel rather than a record, it all started to get a lot easier, and I soon became a convert, especially with the way jog wheel technology has improved over the years. Not that I've ever been able to get rid of my Technics mind. On the software side of things, there were really two products that first made big waves in the scene. Those being Native Instruments Tractor and Serato's Scratch Live. Both platforms allowed tunes to be mixed using virtual decks on your computer, so you could just drag MP3s straight onto them to load them up, and could also control them externally using vinyl or CD. This is done simply by using special records or CDs containing synchronising data called timecode that locks to each deck, so physical movements of the record or jog wheel translate into real-time waveform scrubbing. So not only do you have all the digital benefits with these systems, but they're also compatible with standard vinyl and CD setups, making them among the most popular choices today. Of course, vinyl and CD decks do come at a considerable cost, particularly as you also need a hardware mixer for these setups. So another attractive feature of the software setup is that you have the option of a hardware control surface instead, 
which combines all of the separate hardware required to externally mix with a computer into a single, more affordable package. Meaning you get an audio interface for hooking up to the PA, and then essentially two decks and a mixer. And it's also more portable, so you can just plug it in and fire up the software to get going. So that's covered the basic range of DJing formats. However, when software such as Ableton Live was released, a new breed of even more laptop-based DJs started to appear, as this music software features a mode more suited to live performance, allowing audio clips to be played together in a non-real-time grid, so you can easily mix whole tracks, loops, as well as single hits and stabs together. And there's even a crossfader and a cue mode for tracks, making it even more adaptable to a DJing situation. Although there are controllers available for live to ensure that DJs can give a real performance, not being transfixed to a computer screen or reliant on a mouse, the problem with live DJing is that all the tracks are already synced. This isn't a problem for DJs as such. In fact, it's a huge time saver and can open up all sorts of creative possibilities. But it is a far cry from the original DJing formats, and some would say is technically cheating. In fact, there are some clubs here in Berlin that insist that certain hardware formats, such as vinyl, are used. Often the best solution is to go for a hybrid setup, which most systems allow. You've already seen how DJ software can be linked up to vinyl and CD decks using timecode, but other products also exist to make this relationship even more harmonious. Novation's Dicer is a good example of this, as it makes cue points, looping, and effects controls in the software immediately at hand by the use of a convenient little control surface that fits neatly into the corner of a vinyl or CD deck. More complex hybrid setups allow you to use software like Ableton Live alongside Tractor or Scratch Live, where the two apps can be made to synchronise with each other, enabling you to keep a more traditional DJ setup, but add in all the benefits of Live on top. But this is all starting to get a bit advanced now, so let's jump to the opposite end of the spectrum instead. More affordable consumer software has blown up over the last few years, as I'm sure you're aware. And this has brought with it options for DJs too. Take DJ for example, which is an iPad app that gives you two virtual decks in the same way that Tractor or Scratch Live do, with many of the same controls, and makes clever use of the iPad's touchscreen technology. <laughs> even including a pretty nice effects section. All you need is an adapter to give you the extra headphone output, and away you go. It may not offer quite the same stability as the high-end pro options, but for DJing at your mate's house party, it definitely does the job. So that's given you an intro to the different formats available for the modern DJ, from the more affordable consumer end right through to professional setups. We're going to take a closer look at all of these setups on the course. Although there are some differences between them, with some obviously being more comprehensive than others, they all contain the same basic controls. So once you know one, you essentially know them all. And it's these generic skills that I'm going to teach you on this course. Next time, we're going to look at the fundamental controls you find on all of these setups and finding out how they work. See you then.